If you think today's standard of golf makes it extremely hard to make it on the PGA Tour, at least today's standards rely solely on the individual skill set. In the making of the PGA Tour, when names like Palmer, Hogan and Sarazen were lifting the game to new heights, golfers were required to have an invitation from another professional, and if you weren't in the right circle or your face didn't fit, your dreams could be crushed very quickly, and amateur golf would be your only option. Off the beaten track in Garland, Texas, lived a small family of Mexican descent. A mother, a grandfather, and a small boy named Lee Buck Trevino lived in a beaten down house with no running water and no electricity. The father left when Lee was very young, which left his grave digging grandfather the job of raising Lee. By age five, Lee was working in the fields and by age eight, rarely attended school as he was forced to work to put food on the table. At the age of 14, Lee had completely left school and began working as a caddy at the Dallas Athletic Club. He earned $30 a week caddying and shoe shining, which was quite a nice steady wage. After work, he'd stay behind and practice, hitting balls off extremely tight lies with little to no grass, something that forced him to catch the ball perfect or he'd receive an uncomfortable rattle up his arms. The next few years started shaping Lee into a man that he was really starting not to like. The continuous peer pressure from older gentlemen was leading Trevino down a slippery path. Noticing this, Lee decided to join the Marines as a machine gunner and was then posted in Japan. Away from all the distractions for the first time in his life, Lee had discipline and routine, something he'd never had because of his relaxed upbringing. So preparing himself for a tour of the unknown, Lee was all packed and ready to be sent out on his first mission. However, whilst boarding the ship, some of Lee's documents got messed up and they had no idea where to send him. Not knowing what to do with him, Lee's captain asked if he played any sports. Lee responded, I play golf, I guess. With that, the captain was straight on the phone and Lee had two rounds to prove himself to the coach of the golf team. The first round he shot a nervy 78, but day two shot a stunning 67. And with that, Lee was allowed to join the third main division golf team. Lee had literally dodged a bullet. If he didn't make that golf team, he would have been posted in Vietnam and his chances of survival would have been slim. Instead, for the next two years, Lee played golf for seven days a week, and that was essentially his amateur practice. After being discharged from the army, Trevino was kind of lost and began playing his golf at Tennyson Park. There was a lot of money floating around Tennyson Park back in the day, and it was widely known as a hustler's paradise, with big stake money matches being played on the daily. Not knowing who he was, Lee got right amongst it straight away, having money matches with people whilst not having a dime to his name. Now that's pressure. After a while his name got around and people weren't going to be stupid enough to put their money on the line against this little bandit. Needing another source of income, but wanting to carry on playing golf, Trevino turned pro and got a job at a driving range, which gave him the option to apply for the PGA Tour. Lee needed a signature from another professional before he could apply, and now working with one, he thought this would be plain sailing, but he'd be wrong. His boss refused to sign Trevino's letter, saying that he needed more foundation in his life. Lee took that to heart and quit immediately, hoping somebody local would sign his card, but nobody in the Dallas area wanted to know. See, although Lee was a good golfer, other people saw him as a poor outsider and weren't willing to put their name on the line. With the dream put on hold, Lee went back to what he knew best, gambling. He moved to El Paso and started hustling deep pocket cotton farmers, dressing up in Mexican disguise and hustling to make a living. The problem was Lee was a no-nonsense, rough and tough guy who didn't take any crap from no one, and the image that the PGA was trying to create meant he just didn't fit in. While doing his own thing and thinking the game was up, there was one man that took a shine to Lee. His name was Bill Eschenbrenner, and he was willing to put his name forward to the PGA, and give Trevino his signature. In fact, Bill said he'd personally go to the PGA meeting, put his name forward, and if he doesn't live up to the expectation, they could take away his PGA card as well. That was some statement, and a statement that convinced the PGA Tour and gave Trevino a chance. At the age of 26, Lee's long-awaited time had come. He qualified for the US Open in 1966, making the cut tying for 54th, earning $600. He qualified again in 1967, shooting three over, 
eight shots behind champion Jack Nicholas, and only four behind runner-up Arnold Palmer. Trevino earned $6,000 for finishing fifth, which earned him his tour privileges for the rest of the 1967 season. He won $26,000 as a rookie, 45th on the PGA Tour money list, and was named Rookie of the Year by Golf Digest. The fifth place finish at the US Open also earned him an exemption into the following year's event. So Bill's PGA card was safe, and Lee had proven he was good enough for the tour. However, his attitude hadn't changed, and the USGA still wasn't happy about him being there. In 1968, his second year on the circuit, Trevino won the US Open at Oak Hill Country Club in Rochester, New York, four strokes ahead of runner-up Jack Nicklaus, the defending champion. Trevino's hard work and determination made him Nicklaus's biggest rival in the 1970s. The 5'7 Pocket Rocket's gruelling practice schedule consisted of 1,000 balls, one hour of putting, and 18 holes every day. That work ethic saw Trevino have a remarkable string of victories during a 20-day span in the summer of 1971. He defeated Nicholas in an 18-hole playoff to win the 1971 US Open. Two weeks later, he won the Canadian Open, and the following week won the Open Championship, becoming the first player to win those three titles in the same year. Trevino was awarded the Hickok Belt as the top professional athlete of 1971. He also won Sports Illustrated Magazine's Sportsman of the Year and was named ABC's Athlete of the Year. This newfound fame meant Trevino had made it, but what Lee didn't expect and could have never have planned for was how much people loved him. Lee's mannerisms on the golf course were loved by many, and he brought a new sense of humour to the sometimes too serious sport. However, this mask Lee was wearing hid a deep, dark side in Trevino's private life. On the course, he was this energetic guy who seemed a little loopy, talking to himself as he walked the course. But that was all a coping mechanism. After the lights had gone out and the curtains closed, Lee would go back to his hotel room and never leave. He hated the fame and he hated the press. Lee just wanted a quiet life and people had him misunderstood. With the anxiety flowing through his veins, amazingly, none of this ever affected his golf. In 1972 at Murfield, Scotland, Trevino became the first player to successfully defend the Open Championship since Arnold Palmer in 1962. Trevino had five consecutive birdies from the 14th through the 18th, holding a bunker shot on the 16th and sinking a 30-foot chip on the 18th for a round of 66. In the final round, Trevino was tied for the lead on the 17th tee with Tony Jacklin. Trevino chipped in from the rough at the back of the green for a par on the 17th. A shaken Jacklin three-putted the same hole from 15 feet for bogey. Trevino parred the 18th hole for a final round of 71, winning the Open by a stroke over Nicholas, with Jacklin finishing third. Trevino holed out four times from off the greens during that tournament. Nicholas had won the first two majors of the year, the Masters and the US Open, and fell just short in the third leg of the Grand Slam. After holding his chip shot on the 17th in the final round, Trevino said, I'm the greatest chipper in the world, and nobody could deny him that crown. With three of the four majors in the bag, the fourth and final part of the puzzle seemed extremely harder than the others to get over the line. At the Masters, Lee fell out of place. He had more in common with the people working there than he did with the members, and he just didn't like the culture. Trevino said that he felt uncomfortable with the atmosphere at Augusta National, and that he disliked the course because of his style of play. Trevino did not accept invitations to the Masters in 1970, 1971, and 1974. In 1972, after foregoing the previous two Masters tournaments, he stored his shoes and other items in the trunk of his car, rather than use the locker room facilities in the clubhouse. Trevino complains that he had not qualified as a player. The club would not have let him onto the grounds except through the kitchen, but he later described his boycott of the Masters the greatest mistake I've made in my career, and called Augusta National the eighth wonder of the world. With the Masters pushed aside, Lee wasn't slowing down winning everything else. In 1974, Trevino won the Greater New Orleans Open without scoring any bogeys. The only time it had happened in the PGA Tour individual event until JT Poston accomplished this feat at the 2019 Wyndham Championship. At the PGA Championship in 1974, Lee won the title by a stroke, again over Jack Nicklaus. The fourth and final time, Nicklaus was a runner-up in a major to Trevino. Lee used a putter he found in a friend's attic only days before, 
and had only one three put on the 71st hole. It was the first year since 1969 in which Nicholas did not win a major championship, but he did regain the title the following year. Lee's career was a staggering one this far, and with a lifestyle that didn't exactly resemble an athlete, he'd done amazing not to get injured. If something was going to injure Lee, it would need to be God himself, just to get through that thick skin of his. At the Western Open near Chicago in 1975, Trevino was struck by lightning and suffered injuries to his spine. He underwent surgery to remove a damaged spinal disc, but back problems continued to hamper his play. With lightning striking and bankruptcy and divorce all hitting around the same time, Lee was starting from scratch again. The one thing that separated Trevino from all the other professionals was how hard he worked. And if there was ever a man to come from nothing, lose it all and make it all back again, it was Lee. In the early 80s, Trevino's quest to rebuild began. He had three PGA Tour wins in 1980 and finished runner-up to Tom Watson in the 1980 Open Championship. However, it was the long-awaited major that Trevino was searching for, and after 10 years and at the age of 44, people thought his time had passed. The people were wrong once again though and Trevino won his sixth and final major at the PGA Championship in 1984. With a score of 15 under par, Lee became the first player to shoot all four rounds under 70 in the PGA Championship. He was the runner-up the following year in 1985, attempting to become the first repeat champion since Denny Shute in 1937. From 1968 to 1981, Trevino won at least one PGA Tour event a year, a streak of 14 seasons. He also won more than 20 international and unofficial professional tournaments, but with two divorces and two bankruptcies from bad investments, every penny Lee had made from a legendary career was gone. Lee knew if he had a good career on the seniors tour, he could recoup a lot of his money, live a good life, and have money left over to give to his kids. Lee was one of the charismatic stars who was instrumental in making the senior PGA Tour an early success. He claimed 29 senior wins, including four senior majors and topped the seniors money list in 1990 and 1992. For 10 years from 1990 to 2000, Lee became the most successful player in the tour's history, and to this day sits at third behind Hale Irwin and Bernard Langer. So after a turbulent career that took so long to get started and was nearly never meant to be, Lee hung up his spikes with 92 professional wins. A man who could easily have quit at so many points in his life, but had a passion and the work ethic to make it happen. Lee is loved by so many and misunderstood at the same time, but the numbers don't lie and Trevino was an all-time great. His entry into the World Golf Hall of Fame will see his name live on forever and his legacy live on. But what people will truly remember is Lee's gold heart.